Welcome to the Christy Taylor Show. I am so excited to have you here today. And I have a very special guest all the way from Atlanta. And he is one creative soul. He is definitely someone that I've known for a long time. We actually met via Twitter. And somehow, some way, over a decade later, we are still hanging tough as creative friends. Let me tell you more about my special guest, Jamal W. Hankins, Skyberg Glimp. I probably said that wrong, but we're going to get it right. <laughs> Jamal W. Hankins, who resides in Atlanta, was born and raised in Brooklyn East, New York, the youngest of three. The flame of creativity was sparked early in his life, most in part due to his parents. They were both avid readers and film enthusiasts. And let me tell you, his dad loved sci-fi. His mom took to thrilling books of crime, horror, suspense, and mystery. And Jamal spent many years sampling, enjoying, and studying all of these great things that influenced him and set his imagination into a creative frenzy. Now he's combining those elements from all of his influences. Jamal writes dark tales of drama, fantasy, horror, and science fiction. His characters are birthed into deceptive and unforgiving worlds to fight for survival because... That's just the way he likes it. Oh, yeah. Within the instinct to survive, we can all find ourselves being transformed. Welcome to the Christy Taylor Show. Hey, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to improvise so much. Now, you know, I always mess up your handle. Oh, it's yeah. Glyph. <laughs> That's correct. Scriber Glyph. Just, just think okay. of like hieroglyph, Scriber Glyph. Oh, all these years and I never asked you that question. How do I? <laughs> <laughs> now, let's talk about the fact how we met, because we are social media friends. I have yet to actually, other than through virtual, from Skype to Google Hangout to Zoom yeah. to ever meet you face to face. But we, how do we meet again? It was um, on Twitter and uh, we actually, it was, um, we met from, it was from somebody, someone else that we kind of both knew. And uh, she contacted me and said that um, you were looking for some help or you were trying to like some group or something like that. And so she gave me your uh, Twitter handle. And so I reached out to you and, you know, asked if you needed some help. And uh, you said yes. And um, it started from there. And the thing is, is we were trying to find like other screenwriters and novelists and other writers who were on Twitter because at that time, Twitter way before what it is now was exactly. really the place, kind of like all the other platforms when they first get started, the creatives and everybody who's just kind of low key hanging out. And uh, quite a few writers were on there. And yeah, we started trying to come together and actually what we ended up creating was a online writing club and uh, yes. CFW Scribes, television, film and web scribes. And yep. then my friend, Shonda Kamaria, who's from Memphis. And then there was another Twitter friend out in California. We had never met each other. <laughs> <laughs> but we have been friends. Oh, my God. Your son is how old? Because you're, I don't even know if you had a son. Your older son. Yeah, my older son is 10. And uh, youngest is five. So, um, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I had children when we, yeah, I don't think I had children when we met. So yeah, no, more than yeah. 10 years. More than 10 years. And I'm so grateful. And it's so funny because of course we do follow each other on, as the platforms have grown, we are on Instagram together. We're on Facebook together. I'm really only on Twitter now for the news <laughs> and the gossip. Yeah, yeah, I'm not really, I mean, I, I, I keep trying to go back to Twitter. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm more heavily on Instagram now. I think I just, I, I, I have more engagement, more interaction on Twitter. Sorry, on, um, on Instagram as opposed to Twitter. Um, obviously I still have my account, but yeah, I'm not, I, I don't know. It's, it's different now than the way it was yeah. back in the day. It's just, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, I don't have that same connection to it. Well, definitely I do know over the last five to, well, five years, certainly, when the news organizations and the politicians took over Twitter, it's yeah. another animal all together. And we won't name any names, but yeah, one person that <laughs> I'm not looking forward to uh, call it out anytime soon, but I'm, hopefully, well, his Twitter account will be active, but he'll probably still keep up a lot of noise. Of but uh, <laughs> it's in his nature. It's in his nature. But let me tell you this. Let's get to um, 
One of the things that I want people to know about you, okay, is the fact that your name is Jamal W. Hankins. But in our writing circle, we call you J Dub. So yes. if any event that I call you J Dub in this interview, I want them to know why I'm doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, you made up the name, so <laughs> I know, right? We, so okay, J Jamal, reading your bio, I finally discovered why you write such dark work. All these years, I was like, what? We were, we were like, okay, we need to go check on our friend in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about your early influences. Well, um, a lot of my early influences, I mean, growing up, I mean, my, my, my household, we loved like science fiction and horror. So I grew up watching horror, Friday the 13th, um, Halloween, Hellraiser. Um, I grew up watching those things like normal. And, um, you know, it just, it just, it just got into my blood. Then all, then my mother, she loved reading Stephen King, you know, in, in other books of horror. So um, that element was always there, science fiction, horror, fantasy. And as, as, as you said in my bio, mainly coming from my parents. Um, so yeah, so that's where it came from. I just kind of grew a, uh, an affinity for, an affinity for, for, for people literally fighting for their lives tooth and nail trying to survive. Um, and that, that always, that always stuck with me. One thing I love about your writing, um, because is the fact that you do develop very complex characters. And one thing I want to say that in our writing group that we are actually resurrecting this year after almost a five year hiatus after your, <laughs> second, your second son, um, we are looking forward to, you know, exploring a lot of your worlds, but I kind of want to also anchor this interview into the fact that beyond your early influences, you also had influences by hip hop, also graphic novels and anime. Let's talk about that. Um, well, uh, it pretty much I, I pull like I, I've always said everything that that um, that I like to partake in, like some music, horror, film writing. Um, I also like to try, try and produce those things. So in terms of anime, my father, uh, thankfully, he would go to the video store and he would sometimes come back home and we, he would have rented some anime for me, you know? Uh -huh. And so I, I fell in love with anime because it was so different from, I guess, mainstream American cartoons. I, oh, even though a lot of American cartoons were actually, were actually Japanese imports um, and just redubbed. But um, yeah, so I mean, that's where that, um, yeah, I, that, that I, I can, I can kind of put that on my father. Also video games, um, uh, yeah, video games, anime. Um, it, was, it was just a lot, just a, a, a lot of things that um, it was just so much creative energy back then. It then, like, especially with with um, with hip hop at that time, you know, like the '90s era. Um, and I was, I just wanted to pull all those things together. You know, uh, like I said, I I liked music, so I tried to, you know, I tried to make music. I like. Um, anime and obviously comic books and reading novels and things like that. So I want to do that as well. The way certain, I, like I read certain books and the way they made me feel, the way sometimes you can get lost in the book, lost in, lost in the world of a story. Um, I, I wanted to do that as well. I wanted to create that as well. So that, that definitely uh, fueled me. And like I said, my mother had an extensive library of books. Um, so I always had something to pull from. And then like I said, uh, getting into anime, um, just hours and hours and hours, just sampling different um, different anime, different genres, different um, looks, you know, some sci-fi, some modern day, um, you know, these complex characters. Um, so yeah, just all of those things just pulled together. And then luckily, thankfully, I was, a, I had a small circle of friends and they were all just as creative as, 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 as I was, so. This is um, when you were living in Brooklyn? Growing yeah, up exactly. Yeah. Um, so one of my best friends who I'm, I'm still uh, friends with now to this day, we've known each other probably since like first or second grade. Um, he was uh, an artist slash writer and I was, well, he was more of an artist and also did some writing and now mainly focused on writing because me, you know, me trying to write, I'm sorry, me trying to draw compared to his drawing, it, it just didn't work. So I just kind of focused on writing. But like I said, just, you know, being around him and, and some of my other friends and like I said, a lot of them were artists 
And then, like I said, we were heavily into video games. I'm t- so going to the arcade, playing Street Fighter and things like that. So and looking at the, the art books for the video games, you know, wow. um, those, you know, it, it just really just just looking at the art, looking at the characters, going with the characters over the years. Um, and like I said, diff- just different anime, film, independent film, just all of those things. I just love storytelling. So that's how I see everything. So like music, music. It's just another form of storytelling. So that I like true. to do that as well. Um, obviously, art, you know, just, just static art, hand drawing art, paintings, that's storytelling. Um, obviously, writing novels and short stories, obviously, that's, that's storytelling. Film, that's storytelling. So I, early on, saw all of these things as, as, as the same thing. It's all just telling stories. Um, and so, like I said, whatever I like, I also want to try to contribute to that as well. So that that's really how everything started. I, I was just absorbing all of these things and just wanting to put out, you know, some of what some of what I was taking in. It's amazing to hear you talk about your foundation because I knew you as, or I was introduced to you uh, when you had already been, you know, releasing s- short stories. Um, you were already into major uh, building, well, novels you know, screenplays. So, and I knew that you had friends from back home who were very much into graphic novels, comic books. And I was like, it is so cool to see a bro who uh, has a wide palette. And uh, it's Uh, beautiful to hear your foundation story. (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's, I mean, to this day, just, you know, I, I just, I, every I like I say everything I watch. I mean, I'm, I'm still I'm still watching horror, still watching indie films, and like I say, it wasn't always it wasn't always just horror. You know, like I said, just some really cool, just dramatic films that, like I said, just pull you in. You fall in love with the characters. One of my favorite uh, films is um, a film with uh, Christina Ricci and uh, Vincent Gallo called Hello Sixty Six. That's like a cult classic. Um, you know, I would just and that's another thing. I would just sometimes just catch. Uh, mm-hmm. movies on cable just at night, you know, mm-hmm. and it would just suck you in. You know, you have a co- quarter movie, just you can't sleep or whatever. It's just really, really late at night. You just flip through the channels and you land on the movie and you start watching it and then you just get engulfed in it. So yes. once again, I wanted to create that as well. I wanted, to, I wanted to create that experience for other people. Now, now, Jamal, okay, I know that professionally you have another trade, you have other experiences, um, but when it came to actually taking your creativity seriously, you know, and really start releasing it, when did that start happening? Um, I would say um, not too long before we met, actually. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, like I so said, I've, I've always been creative. I've always created. But in terms of actually trying to put myself out there for people to consume, um, it wasn't that far um, it wasn't that long after, long before you and I met. I mean, like, I, I'm, you know, I was on Twitter. I was trying to uh, get into the writing community and just, just, just trying to hobnob with different people, just to meet other writers, see what they're writing. And also at that time, I was still tr- trying to put together my writing process. And as you know, I love, you know, the writing process I and, and development. <laughs> <laughs> He's a mad so, scientist when it comes to that. Yeah. So, um, so actually, he, so um, it, it came to a point to where I actually wanted to start going to, like, actual physical writing groups. And um, man, I can't remember that the, the website now, but it's, it's like a website where there's like a bunch of different groups. You can set up your own group, and mm-hmm. I found a bunch of different writing groups in Atlanta. You know, and mm-hmm. we would like meet up, say, like at um, uh, a Starbucks or something like that. And so um, I, I started going to some of those, just, you know, feeling out and, and just seeing what other writers were doing. And so, you know, you kind of shop around until you find a place that's, that's really nice for you. So there was this one, one um, author, she was an independent author, and she had actually like rented out a space so she could have her writing. So, you know, you can go there, there was, you know, a big table, we would sit around the table, yeah. share our stories and things like that. and um, uh, I, at that time, I was working on a story called um, Mother's Little Helper. And 
Yes. And she, I that. yeah. And so she was just like, hey, why don't you publish this? And I was like, huh? What do you, you know, what do you mean? You know, <laughs> it's like, I mean, obviously publishing was in my mind, but it was like kind of just eh, eventually. Down the road. You know, right, right. Exactly. But she was a, a self published author. So, so she was like, yeah. So she, she uh, gave me the contact information for um, an editor, an editor that she used. So mm. I'm like, okay, let me, let me actually try this. So <laughs> I finished the story, send it to the editor, you know, and all the while learning about self publishing and, you know, what you got to do and, you know, get the, the, the numbers for the book and copywriting and all, all, all of that stuff. And, um, got the edits back. I made, you know, the changes, everything seemed right. And so I, I went ahead and I so published it and I was like, Oh, okay. That wasn't, that wasn't that bad. I can do this again. How did you publish that? What year was that? 2001. Oh, wow. It's been a minute. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I want to say maybe, maybe yeah. like 2012, 2013. No way. Yeah, wait. It's been a minute. Yeah. Um, so not that. So did I do that before we met? Or no, it was it was definitely <laughs> after because I remember one time you were telling us that you were going to actually release it, and you showed us the cover. Okay, okay, because yeah. I, during that time I released like two others after that. You know, because I was you know I was in a groove at that point in time. <laughs> and I, like, <laughs> I have all these other stories, so. You know, I, I re released Mother's, Mother's Little Helper, which was a um, a horror short story. Then after that, I released a another another story called Push, which was kind of like a psychological thriller. It was set in uh, Brooklyn, New York, and literally in the, the the neighborhood I grew up in. I based everything there. Um, that was really fun, right? Um, and, and using, you know, because a lot of times, you know, I, I was writing science fiction in in in, in and uh fancy horror so in right. most of those things everything's made up so writing a story that was based in reality modern day well present day in the neighborhood i lived in it was really fun because i got the i i, I got to use my actual experiences and my the sights wow. and sounds and you know the bus stops and you know the high school of the block and the basketball courts and um, the, the character at one point in time, he's riding a bus and he's listening to Jill Scott and things like that. So, <laughs> you know, I haven't been able, I wasn't able to do things like that in some of the other stories. Cause like I said, it was science fiction, fantasy. And you could do that in horror, but most of my horror is still kind of fantasy based kind of, or, or sci-fi based. Mm -hmm. Um, so pushed, uh, like I said, I had real fun. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing that. But then after that, it was another psychological thriller called Two Sided Triangle. Um, so yeah, oh I, was, God, I, was I remember role. that. That was, yes, yeah. I remember that one. And the premise of that had to do with relationship, which was kind of a interesting yes. thing. Yeah. That you, yeah, that you because you do a lot of fantasy and sci fi putting black people in the year 3100. <laughs> so when you yeah. did that relationship, when that was different, that was different, yeah, the, uh, that was different. Um, but it was, it's, it's. It's still, it was still in, in the same vein of what I like to, like I said, for, for me, science fiction, fantasy, and, and horror, that's easy. I grew up on that, right? So it's easy for me to churn that out and think of, of, of stories and things. But I wanted to uh, expand and, and do, like I said, like drama, thriller, you know, yeah. nothing to where it's not supernatural, it's not people with special abilities, it's just people. Um, having to deal with people, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to where I think, I think a lot of times that those, those make, you know, the best dramas, those, those can make the yes. best thrillers and, and moments of, 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 of suspense and just seeing sometimes people at their worst, you know, yeah. and, um, and, when, and, and even in that vein, having to fight still tooth and nail, um, for survival. So, so yeah, so I put out those three, and then I, uh, you know, I learned about screenwriting and um, studied that for a little bit, and then um, you should know. Then I, I sort of, that's when I started writing um, things people do, which is yes. another, um, you know, drama, gritty, to a degree. Um, so yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> and and J Dub, J Dub, I gotta call him J Dub, y'all. Uh, J Dub, one of the things I loved about your writing and your was your characters. And I know you to be a mad scientist when it comes to character development. Uh, let's talk about your approach to that because you're. What are you really looking for when you're developing your characters the way the way you do it? Well, I'm I'm looking for. I, I want my characters to be multidimensional because people are multidimensional. You know, I I, I never really like characters that you know um, one dimensional cardboard cut out. I even hate I. Yeah, literally, I, I hate the I hate in stories where you have like supporting characters, and mm -hmm. to me, this mainly comes across in film. And I understand film, you know, it's a short medium, have a short time frame to try and tell a story. But in a lot of films, I don't like the fact to where like the supporting characters is like it's so painfully obvious that they're just there just for the, to help main, the main character. character. You know, it is like there's no ever. I mean, there's no real effort to flesh them out. You don't really get to know their story. And I understand it's a film, so it's different. Um, but I the the depth that you can go in uh, a novel, right? I want that depth everywhere, if if possible. So that's the main thing I, I'm looking for when I'm um, when I'm developing a character is just for them to be multidimensional. Um, so oftentimes. When I'm developing a character, I'll try and think of okay, so let's say their their habits and stuff, their their activities, their interests. I try to look at it sometimes. Okay, well, what did they do professionally, right? What's their job? Then also, what did they like to do uh, just publicly in terms of something that everybody knows that they like to do? Then what did it? What, what do they like to do personally that only a few people know that they like to do? People who are really close to them. And then what do they like to do privately that nobody knows that they don't share with anybody? And part of that is kind of a, a, a technique or a way to kind of uh, uh, prepare yourself to, to where no matter what situation your character is in, you have a good idea of what they most likely would be doing. You know, because sometimes mm -hmm. when you're writing, or I've heard other writers, you know, say, okay, I got to do this scene. And so what should the character be doing? You know, because, like, they only know either their job or, you know, what right. they're going to do in the story. But just as a regular person, they have no idea what they would be doing. But right. I think with that method, look, you know, getting an idea of what they do professionally, publicly, personally, privately, like I said, no matter what situation they're in, it's like, okay, if they're home by themselves, well, they have an activity for that. What do they normally do when they're home right. by themselves? Privately. Right. So it could be, it could be, um, you know, everybody has like you know, those guilty pleasures. So it could be watching like a reality TV show or it could be lounging around the house naked, eating ice cream or whatever. But you already know, you know, it given how the scene is, is going to start or, or where the scene is, you have an idea of what they most likely would be doing. So let's say if uh, in, in public, right, um, let's say they like to talk about other people or make fun of other people, right? So if you have a scene of them in public, that's something that you can kind of thread through that scene, you know, and then when you're faithful to that, it becomes a natural trait that the reader begins to associate right. with that character, you know, so they begin to feel multidimensional because, oh, you know, in this, in this uh, situation, they do this, in this situation, they do that. They're not doing the same thing in every situation. So really, like I said, it's just, I, I like for them to be multidimensional um, because the, the, that's what we fall in love with really, I think, you know, uh, when true. we, when we um, are reading stories or, or, or watching a film is when we're able to see a range in a character. Now, obviously in certain, say like action films or things like that, a lot of times the characters kind of one dimensional and for that it's kind of fine because, okay, it's an action film, what do you expect? But, <laughs> I think... well, but, with, that, but with that point though, um, because I know that you do like to Put a lot of meat on the bone of a character even the supporting characters and the characters that surround them because it's almost like if the main character has picked their friends their friends need to in some way be a reflections of them even if it's someone they work with everything in the story should be supporting yes the overall mission of the story but at the same token what is the world i mean i love how you build worlds and i think because you do um 
exist in a lot of sci-fi and fantasy. And that requires, as a writer, a lot of development. Like if you're writing, like the one you're working on now, um, you have yeah, to create zero. the entire world that they're in, the time and the century and the philosophies and the religion and the worldview that is not quote unquote based in the present day. So even when it came to you de developing those side characters, supporting characters, those, the coffee uh, hop, you know, the person that you just see on the, randomly in the street that everybody was very, very well flushed out. And I've always enjoyed that. But with that being said, I want you to kind of share a moment, part of the process. Because okay. one thing I love about you is that yes, you think about that, but then you create actual processes to help you reach that conclusion. Yes. When it comes so, to and that came from uh, obviously early on in writing, getting constantly getting stuck with certain things in, ter in terms of trying to put the story together. And you're writing, and then you get to a particular part, and you're like, oh, I don't, I didn't think about this. Or, oh, I didn't realize that. Or, oh man, I need a character for this. Or, oh, I don't even know how this works. So, you know, so I got, I got tired of, 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 of getting stuck, which I found to be getting stuck unnecessarily. So what I, what I set out to do was create a process that would allow me to, 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 to consider as many uh, uh, realistic options as possible when I'm together a story. And not that every story has to have all of these categories ticked off, but it, it just asks you to consider, you know, do we need this? And if, if not, okay, great. You don't have to put anything there. But it could be a point to where it's like, hey, do we need this? And you're like, you know what? We just might need that. You know, so um, an example, the way I, 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 I set up things, I have like buckets or folders for when I'm starting a story. And so they're, they, they kind of go down a list there. Okay, obviously it's the characters. Then you go into like races and, and cultures and organizations, locations, the world, mm -hmm. sciences, technologies, items, weapons, you know, things like that. So special powers. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, special power. So that way, like I say, if, if I'm doing a, a sci-fi novel, right, and I'm going to a degree down my list and I come across the um, the vehicle section, right, like in this story, the main character, she, she has a, a vehicle, a, a particular strike ship that she flies, right? Um, and it's like, oh, I have to develop that. Oh, yeah, okay, let me, let me get on that, right? And then you go to organizations, right? And if this is a, 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 a fictional world, there will be some organizations that, that would exist, right? Especially right. in this story, there there is a particular organization. So, okay, well, I have to develop that. So, like I said, it, it was just a way for me to, as I come up with ideas for a story, right? I could just be brainstorming. And as I get ideas, I drop them in these buckets, right? Mm -hmm. And everything would be kept together. And then, like I said, um, really is just about just asking you, hey, do we need to develop, you know, uh, a culture, a particular, like, say, like, alien culture? Do we need to develop that? Do we need to develop, um, uh, or say, like, any, any any particular items that are used in the story? Do we need to develop these items? Do we need to develop these weapons? Or are there any, is there anything special about these weapons that's different from, you know, regular everyday weapons that we need to take a look at and develop? So really, it's just like I say, it's, it's just it's, it's a list of categories that you just go down and you consider, do I need this? Do I need that? Um, and as you put in, as you put in uh, items into these categories, your world will naturally start to build. It'll be structured, you know, because you'll have, okay, I have these locations. I have these worlds. I, I have... Um, these cultures, I have these organizations, I have these mm -hmm. sciences and technologies. And for me, it's, it's everything that you would need to build a world. So mm -hmm. then I'll also move that on to in, in terms of developing a character, right? Like I said, I like them to be multidimensional. So first start off with, okay, physical description, then personality and habits, 
been um, um, activities and uh, activities and interests. Then there's abilities and disabilities, and that's that's another thing. When I thought about the, dis the ability slash disability uh, category, I really like that. Now, when I say ability, I'm talking about say like somebody is um is 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 good at convincing people of things. They're like a, a, right. a, a, like like a good like a natural sales persuasion, correct? Exactly. Great to persuasion. me, that that's that's an ability. You know, not a special ability. Like I can fly, but it is abil an ability that can be unique to to a character in your story. Right. But then also, I have ability abilities slash disability. Right. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, when we're developing characters, we're not thinking about disabilities. Right. right? But so if true. I come across that that category, like, oh, wait a minute, could they have a disability? If they had a disability, what would it be? And then that could add another layer of depth of depth to your character. You know, they, they can have, you know, walk with a limp. They can have a chip tooth. Well, not that a chip tooth is a disability, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> you know, they have they could um a list. Know, they a limb. Talk the list. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. And that and that's something that most likely you would never <laughs> have thought unless unless that disability came with the initial idea of the character in the first place. You know, so well, I want to introduce this thought. Oftentimes when people are writing in any storytelling media, when it comes to character development, particularly when it comes to film, I'll say it like this, because a screenplay is not a final product. It's actually the blueprint for a movie that someone else is going to take your blueprint and turn it into something. When you introduce, let's say, in a cinematic work, uh, a character flaw, a disability, it also needs to really be important to the story. So like if you add, yes. a, you know, then you could use that disability and or ability to help actually shape the character and the decisions they make as they're going along in their story. And exactly. along their yeah. 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 And, and, you know, um, like I said, I think it, it, it can also make your character seem that much more unique. You know, because like I said, nine times out of ten, if you look at most of the characters in most of the books or films, for the most part, they're all able-bodied. You know, right. and, and like I said, and a disability could be stuttering. You know, it could be uh, a cognitive. You know, you know, they, they could you know have a certain level of, you know, um, of, of 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 thinking pro you know process or whatever. But to me, I, it's I just it's, like, you know, I, I think of one character who. They made that that particular malady an important uh -huh. comes the character itself was the, the TV show Monk. Yeah, exa yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And that became a charming aspect about him. Yes. You know, and it made him different from other characters. You know, so like I said, I like to, uh, like, I, so, so, so like I said, so I put these things together, I, I put my process together. To help me think of these things, because like I was finding that naturally, like I said, all of my characters, not all of them, but you know, they were, you know, able-bodied, and you know, there was, you know, but there's always a way you can make them more interesting. So another a category that I have is history slash big secret, right? So obviously, history is the background of your character. What's their backstory? You know, how did they get here? Right. But also, in, in you know, obviously in doing that, you can do, OK, well, they grew up here, you know, and, and they like this. They had a hard life or whatever. But then the the concept of a big secret is like, right. hmm. once again, that's another thing that you probably didn't think about. But you can actually say, well, if they did have a secret, what would it be? What would it be? You yeah. Know? And so being that you just came up with their backstory. And you know where they are at right now, this particular story, present time, is like, could they have a secret that they don't want anybody to know? Which, as you said, could become a part of the story. It can help drive the main story, depending on what that is. Mm -hmm. You know, so once it then adds another layer, you know, so someone could seemingly be like, if you were writing, say, like a goody two shoes character, it's a supporting character, <laughs> let's say. But they're yeah. goody two shoes, right? If all appearances, there's nothing wrong with them, right? But then you get to that big secret, like, wait a minute, could my goody two shoes have a big secret? And what would that big it's secret everybody. be for goody two shoes? Yes. 
Yes, and everybody has a secret. We all have secrets. There are things exactly. that we don't want anyone to know. That's right. Exactly. You know, so like I said, so you know, so just continue to go down and like I say it was, you know, like I say history, big secrets. Um and then I really just got into the the, the aspect of any special skills or abilities or special skills or powers, you know, that's when science fiction and fantasy comes in play and just, you know, right. just cataloging what special abilities or skills they have. And then I even go down to the aspect of, of um, items, tools, and weapons, you know, and just right. locking that down. Cause once again, it, it, and I approach it a particular way for each, each tool, or even ability to have a particular purpose. So I have like these subcategories of um, restorative, offensive, defensive, supportive, or signature. And so, so say like if somebody has special powers, right? Okay, is it a restorative power? Meaning is it an ability that they can heal themselves, you know? Or is it purely a defensive power? Is it purely an, an offensive power or is it a supportive power? Right. So once again, just asking you to think a little bit deeper into their abilities, you know, and, and why do they have it? What do they use it for? You know, and the same thing with their items, weapons, and um, and tools is like, are they, um, like I said, uh, uh, restorative tools? Like, do they have like a, 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 a med kit or something? You know, just once again, right. depending on what the story oh. is, they could be Thor. Thor has to have the hammer. <laughs> exactly. Thor yeah, has to have you, the have hammer. To, you have to write that down. You know. So once again, yeah. it, it, for me, it allows me it, it it allows me to think about my character in a multidimensional way. Um, so as I if I get the initial idea of them, and as I start to go down this list, and I'm answering these questions because I have them in the form of of, of questions. Right. And so just answering these questions and then before you know it, it's like you have you have a, a, a multidimensional character. So even when it comes to see like their particular storyline. Right. Um, when I'm developing a character storyline, I have like these 16 different um, once again categories. Right. That uh, helps you to put their storyline together from beginning to end. So, you know, in the beginning, it's obviously is goal. What do they want to do? Motive, why do they want to do it? Payoff, right? Payoff is what what do they gain if they achieve their goal? Right. Mm -hmm. So so somebody's, you know, goal could be to win a million dollars, right? And it's like, okay, so what's the payoff in that? You know, because the goal is to win is, is to win the the million dollars. Okay, mm -hmm. you get right. that, and how does that what, what's the payoff? You know, which acts right. is, basically is asking you to go deeper. What else do they get out of this, right? So that way it's not true. just- because, because even when we're, whether we're reading a book, watching a movie or a stage play, the character's goal or whatever they acquire is really for something, even if it's tangible. I mean, we say we want a million dollars, but why do we want a million dollars? Exactly, exactly. What's the why behind it? What's the why behind it? Now, J-Dub, yeah. J-W Hankins, we're gonna be right back <laughs> after this, and I wanna find out more about what you're working on right now and okay. ways that everyone can keep up with you. Okay, I'm kicking it with my TFW Scribe co-founder, J.W. Hankins, J.W. Jamal Hankins. Oh, yes. And to make sure that you all can keep up with him, I'm going to make sure that I provide the information across the bottom. And let me tell you something. Uh, J.W., we're going to have some yeah. classes this year. We're going to have to have it where you are training because even in our writing club, we are all masterful storytellers. You know, i got to give props to all of us. But when it comes to your approach to processes and the way that you break things down, you have us going back and like, okay, I got to rethink everything I just did. <laughs> because you're so masterful at it. 
So I definitely want to make sure that we commit to uh, starting to host some Zoom or virtual webinars so that you can start Definitely. teaching these amazing techniques that you have. Now, speaking of techniques, and more importantly about your approach to writing, um, I want to talk about the fact that you have a strong love for female characters. Let's talk about your latest project and what you have planned for 2021. Okay, well, uh, my strong love for female characters, I would have to say, obviously, was sin from my mother. Um, but outside of that, um, I think it, not I think, but I know it's, it's really simple. It's just the fact that growing up, right. As I think most people can agree, we've seen men do pretty much everything. Right. So I'm not too Im impressed with that anymore. You know, and, and to me, things seem to always look better right whenever a woman is doing it so when i think of story <laughs> ideas when i think of characters 99 percent of the time it's always a woman and it's because the situations that i'm seeing the character in just seems to be it's just a it, it just seems that much better when when it's a woman in that situation opposed to a man and like i said possibly because we probably already seen a man in that situation before you know and we haven't seen a woman yet. So when I envisioned it as a woman, I was like, wow, yeah, that looks that looks cool. I've never seen a, a woman in that position before. Um as in and, as uh, in the lead character in your current book, which is gonna be a five-part book. I want my yes. friends to know right now that this man he has uh writing visions that would equal Lord of the Rings. Let me just tell you all that. And shout out to all my bros out here that are writing that sci-fi fantasy. You all may not be recognized yeah. yet, but you all are writing some massive work. So let's talk about Iteration Zero. Zero. Okay, Iteration Zero <laughs> is a uh, science fiction novel that I am in the middle of writing right now. And um, it follows uh, the main character, which is a woman, a black woman named Cameron. And um, she's a, the leader of a squad and they are sent on a mission um, where they have to, um, uh, eliminate, well, they have to rescue uh, a group of people and also eliminate this, um, this, I, I'll say for right now, I'll say, I'll, I'll say this creature that is spreading this, um, this genetic virus. So, um, Cameron, uh, is, is genetically engineered and she is a weapon. She, she's more than a soldier she's literally a living weapon and that's how she sees herself she's been this way well she's been put in this in its in this box so to say so, so to speak from birth right so she's got to a point to where she just sees herself as a weapon so much so to where she like when they send her off on missions she consider it as her being unholstered you know um and uh and she's very um you know, cold hearted to the point, this is the mission, we're going to get it done, you know, because that's, that's all she knows. That's her life. There's no, there's no downtime for her, so to speak, that she's actually doing anything else. Because once she comes back from a mission, her and her squad are put under stasis until the next time they're needed. So basically, whenever she wakes up, it's because she has to go out and, and, and do a mission and most likely kill somebody or you know defend something so all her life all she's known is war and and conflict and combat and on this particular mission she uh begins to uncover well i don't say she begins but she uncovers um a, a particular secret or, or or information that makes her question herself and her um and her position in life really which you know is something that she never had to do but in this particular story it kind of it, it it really begins to to crack her hard exterior mm -hmm. um and pretty much over the course of the five books you know you, you see her change from this cold you know cold hearted you know by the books i don't care we're, we're, this is what we're doing to someone um i can't even say right now exactly how she's going to be um, but you know, it's, 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 it's her art, but it's going to be so much so to where I would say you're, you're going to marvel to see where she winds up looking at where she started, you know? So, you know, like I said, it's, it's, 
it's almost one of those things to where you, you're literally dropping somebody like like the the concept of a of a, of a fish out of water. So right. you know you have somebody a soldier combat ready, you know, and then you say like you send them to go grocery shopping. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> how is that going to turn out? You know, right, right, you know, right. If she's like her and somebody else are are, are going are going for the same box of, box of spaghetti. You know what I'm saying? How is she, you know. <laughs> you know, she's going to intimidate them. She, she's it's going to threaten them. You know, even in picking, say, like her, her, um, uh, uh, um, her buggy. You know, is is it the best buggy? Is this the most efficient one? You know, so so it, it it'll have moments like that, but like it's obviously in in a much different, much more serious sense. But that's the basic idea of what it it, it starts to become. So you see her in this first story in her element, um. You know, it, it, the, the baddest she can be, and then, like I said, this story begins to crack that exterior, and she she really begins to question who she is, what she is, and why she's doing what she's doing, um, and and it should be starts to, to uncover some some lies that have been told to her, and it's kind of really okay. What is she going to do about it? You know, is she going to just ignore it and keep going with the program? Is she going to? Um, Try and walk away from it all, or or she or she uh, going to try and change things because there's other soldiers like her. I mean, there's hundreds of thousands of these genetic soldiers that have been created, and pretty much they've all been told the same lie. They've all been told, all built, they've all been raised the same way, and um, so you know it can also turn into one of those things. Is she going to liberate her people to a degree? You know, so, um, but like I said, you know, there's five books so far. Um, and it, like I said, you, you kind of see her arc through them, but also you see the the change in her subordinates. She's the commander of a, of a three of a three woman team. And so you also get to see, you know, her, her squad and you also get to see them change, you know, as she begins to change because they look to her for leadership and guidance. So as she begins to change, Naturally, they're going to change, and it could be for you know, it could be for, for 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 good, or it could be for worse. You know, depending on their individual you know ideals, which where where it comes in developing the characters, you know, developing the the supporting characters, almost like their main characters. You know, right. so they have their own storyline, their own trajectory. You know, is they're not they're just to support Cam, but it's not. To a degree in the story, it's all about Cameron, but they have their own lives and wants and desires and fears as well that that are also going to be explored. So, so yeah, that's that's one that's thing what that I want to bring in. And um, it's an amazing story. And one thing I've learned about, particularly when you do your fantasy and sci-fi, is that you're also uh, in some way looking at the current state of humanity and the current state of Black people globally. Uh, which yes. always colors your work as well. Yeah. Yes. Well, one, 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 one funny thing I, 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 I want to, I just want to mention is early, very early on when I was creating character, like I said, with, with one of my good friends. And um, at that point in time, like they, the characters that we created, they were like our, to a degree, like our age, they were, you know, in Brooklyn. They were wearing, you know, hoodies and Tims and things like that. But they had like special powers, right? So, but we really uh, patterned them off of us and in and, and our environment and hip hop and things like that. But the one oddity that we didn't even realize when we were creating them is that they all were white, right? So, like I said, you have them. In, wow. Yeah, they were all white, right? And one day it just hit us. It's like, why are they all white? You know what I mean? Because once again, they're, they're dressing like they live in our neighborhood. So I don't want to say they're dressing black, but you know, in, in hip hop fashion, like I said, hoodies, right. tins, you know, big puffy coats, things like that, right? <laughs> and they're all white. And we realized it's because the things that we were ingesting, the, the anime, the video games, the books, the films, we rarely saw ourselves in those things. So when it came time to develop characters, we didn't even see the characters as us, as people who looked like us. We saw them as white characters, you know? And for a while, it was even hard to envision 
a black person, you know, with special powers, you know, it, because, or say like you have a black female character who say like is a, um, a CIA agent, she, you know, and she, and she's a badass and sorry, and she can, um, you know, <laughs> do martial arts and, 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 and all of these things. And literally it, it's, it, it came off as that's not realistic. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. we never saw it, you know, so to 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 address what you said about them being black, we literally had to like you know okay we gotta turn them all black, you know what I mean? so we went through yeah. all of our characters and turned them all black, um and you know and then obviously you know moving forward you know um I, I made characters of various ethnicities and things like that but it that just hit us is that everything every character that we created looked European in some way. You know, and like I said, that's because the influences, they were eat some of them were even Asian. None of them look like us. So that was something, you know, as we as, as we matured, we had to unbrainwash ourselves and be like, no, we can do this. We can be in these places. We can be in these positions. We can have these abilities and these jobs and things like that. And it's not unrealistic, you know, so. It's not yeah. unrealistic. So I have to say that that has been a journey for a lot of creatives. You know, particularly in the end of the 20th century of really beginning to see ourselves in our art that wasn't always just oppressive in nature, yes. you know, or victims. Um, of course, I think a new generation of creatives are being influenced by definitely the DC world, the Marvel world, you know, the Black Panthers, the yes. uh, I show that I was in love with, oh my God, I can't, Black Lightning, you know, so we're oh, starting yes. to see ourselves in even Sci-fi, of course, we know Octavia Butler, but her work was never created visually for us to yeah. have visuals of it. But I think that we are benefiting even from this new renaissance of being able to have the visuals to support the ideas in our mind. So here's a great storytelling for all ethnicities, but definitely yes. we can you know, put ourselves in our world. Uh, so 2021. Exactly. Okay, 2021. Um, I'm obviously I'm trying to um, get iteration zero done. Um, I have some goals set thanks to you. Um, <laughs> uh, set first quarter and second quarter goals. Um, to really try and get that out there. Th this first book. Um, also, I want to um, inspire other people, you know, to write and 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 kind of share what I know. So, uh, um, on my Instagram account. I'm going to be at least, you know, I'm going to try to do it at least once a week, just share some little tips on how I do things, you know, I mean, it may or may not work for you, but a lot of times authors um, or aspiring writers don't know where to begin, don't know where to start, you know, and um, sometimes you need somebody to just put it out there. You know, some, some people don't know where to look. I mean, although we have Google, you know, but even with that, you know, if, you know, if people are more on, well, if certain people are more on their, um, on the social media, you know, and if they could come across this type of information, you know, in their natural setting, you know, right. why not? As opposed to actually you know, trying to go out there, then maybe them seeing that will spark it in their mind to go out and search for whatever else they need. Um, right. But yeah, but yeah, just really trying to, try, trying to help other people, trying to get um, some of my uh, other creative works out there. Uh, I'm doing some art. Um, I, obviously I do music, so I share music on my uh, social media. I share my art on my social media. Um, even some of my philosophies about life and things like that. So in 2021, like the biggest thing right now is to get Iteration Zero done, get that book out. And um, yeah, I really want to uh, share what I know and kind of you know teach what I know about storytelling and just to have that that other perspective compared to some of what's already out there kind of stand that people follow and not right. that that stuff is wrong but you know there's no one way to write there's you know? no one way to write that's so and true so, that is so true. some some people may be trying to force themselves to use methods of writing that just doesn't work for them you know and so i think the more because really, I, I love, I'll go on 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 YouTube and watch other uh, author videos and how you know they talk about their process and just to see what other authors are doing. You know, one 
if, if I can, one aspect, how, how that helped me was when I was going to um, one of the writing groups years ago, uh, there was a, 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 a black author there. I can't remember. His, I, think his name, I, believe, I think his name was Isaac, but he mentioned the concept of a character's anchor. Right, and I had never heard heard of that before. Uh, a character's anchor. So, uh, what a character's anchor is, the, their anchor is the reason why they can't lead the story. The reason why they just can't throw up their hands and say, "You know what? Forget this. I'm not dealing with this. I'm just leaving." Right, and that obviously adds another layer to your character because obviously you have their goal, you mm -hmm. have their motive, why they want to do it. You have. Um, their payoff, what else, what, you know, what, what they gain. Then you have their stakes, what, 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 which is what will they lose if they fail? And then it's like, well, what's their anchor? What's keeping them here? You know, so even if it's somebody who's trying to fight for their freedom, right? Well, right. what's their anchor? Why can't they say, you know what? I'm just going to be a slave. I'm just, you know what? This is too much work. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to die. You know, I could just be happy as a slave. But why can't they do that? Right. You know, right. And you right. can look at that at, in real life. If you say somebody, let's just say, is in a a bad relationship. Well, what's their anchor? Why can't they just leave? You know. And then, like I said, that adds another layer, a deeper layer to your character as to why mm -hmm. they they, I, they just can't leave. You know. So. Um, so He's the mad scientist. He's the mad scientist. Yeah. He puts on the lab coat. He puts on the white lab coat. <laughs> and I definitely want you all to follow him on all of his social media. Check out his website. He is a true gift to us as writers. And I am looking forward in my small way of sharing you with the world that I know. And we are definitely going to be, as we've already started this year, resuming our uh, yes. every other week, every other Saturday. We're going to get back into that, you know, rhythm of uh, meeting up, supporting each other as we're writing our projects, as we're critiquing our projects. And I'm so grateful uh, to have you oh, yeah. as a friend and as a fellow creative who keeps me on my toes. <laughs> <laughs> we keep each other on, on the toes because you're doing some things too. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And you are supportive of that. And I am so grateful. I am truly grateful. Now, J.W. Hankins, thank you. Thank you. This was a delight. This is, and of course, we have our phone conversations, but this was a delight to uh, hear you this way and to have you share with my audience here in Memphis and around the world, who's ever watching via uh, the various social platforms. So I really do appreciate you sharing your wealth of information and just your story as a storyteller. And I need you all to be sure to check him out on social media because he, he kind of glosses over his creativity. But when he talks about his music, when he talks about his artistry, uh, he does 3D illustration. And if anybody has any um inkling to produce and to be an executive producer let me tell you this is one man you definitely want to invest your money in so i just put you on <laughs> i just put you out there like that yes i, I do that. <laughs> <laughs> all right so jw yeah. hankins anything you want to say in the wrap up to the christy taylor show followers um, well, well i mean i just I'm, I'm gonna thank you for uh having me on the show thank you for the uh opportunity mm -hmm. um and um, I, I just want people to know um, that just really that that you can do. I mean, it, it may sound cheesy, but you you really can do whatever whatever it is you want to, do, regardless of your age, regardless of your financial status. There's a way to get things done. Um, you, you know, you just have that 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 passion and that drive, um, and it'll it'll see you through. Um, you know, a lot of people like to try and be in just one box. You know, but like like we talked earlier, um, I like multi-dimensional characters. We are all naturally multi-dimensional, so there's no reason for you to stay in one box. So if you want to try this and try this and try this, go ahead. Why not? You have that ability to. So, as one who who, who dabbles in everything, I have an interest in. Um, I just I just really encourage everyone else to do the same, and you know, just 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 get to know the different dimensions of yourself. I love it. I love it. Thank you, J.W. Hankins. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you all for watching us here on the Christy Taylor Show. 
You should have shared this with a family member, a friend, uh, even someone that you know is a creative. This is a great conversation and he's definitely a great person to follow. So thank you all for watching the Christy Taylor Show.